kill a killer. Kill a killer. Uh, kill a killer. Uh, Mark Scotty reporting. I want to take a little deep dive into the QAnon, the QAnon killer phenomena. Right? Anthony Camillo. Anthony Camillo, the gentleman, 24 year old gentleman from hailing from Staten Island, New York, takes out a 9 millimeter gun and shoots the boss of the Gambino crime family right in front of his house. Ten shots, he unloaded the gun, 12 shots, hit him with 10 bullets, killed him, all over allegedly dating his niece or, or not being able to date his niece. He apparently knocked off the guy, Frankie Callie's license plate in front of his house, backed his white pickup truck and banged into the into Frankie Cali's Cadillac, knocked off his his uh, his his license plate, picked it up, put his fingerprints on it, and handed it to Frankie. Knocked on his door, handed it to the boss of the Gambino crime family. Said, "Here, I'm sorry." And I took out a gun and ba 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 shot down the boss. Now, was it a mob hit? It's turning out not to be a mob hit at all. But there's something else going on. The Q phenomena that we learned. The Q and on killer. Now, is there a casual connection between Q? And I know I, people have been, been, been adamant about, uh, I've been reading the comments, people saying, there's no Q, there's no connection, you're making it up, Q is about the patriots, he's about good for the people. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's look into it. I mean, there is no, look, the, I, I told you in the last video, I, and by the way, if you, if you want to catch up on the subject, here's my, um, here's my, my uh, page. Become a Patreon too, so I can continue to hit the, do this work. We're doing good, by the way, with the Patreon. We're, we got thirty-two Patreons now, doing very well, doing very well for ourselves, right? In Sparta, we need uh, this is people, people powered, right? But I, I created a, um, a list, a what is it called, a uh, playlist of all the QAnon clips. So if you feel like you want to catch up on it, go ahead and do it. So, so QAnon, the QAnon killer guy, right? He's um, I was up there. I was, uh, where was I? I was in Staten Island. And I, I want to play his attorney. That's what I want to do. I want to play his attorney's comments because I caught the attorney on the steps of the courthouse. I was inside the courthouse when the uh, QAnon killer was arraigned. Uh, 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 he was in court. He actually didn't appear in court. But let's listen to his attorney define what the hell is going on for us. Mr. Gottlieb, how much, uh, how much uh, influence do you think? And you notice the, the excellent reporter who's asking him the questions. Right? I noticed all the media, all the major media that was there that uh, are uh, quoting what, what this guy said. His name is Robert Gottlieb. Said is all based on the questions that I asked him. Pow. Sorry about that. Mr. Gottlieb, how much, uh, how much uh, influence do you think QAnon had uh, White House, you had mentioned the last time around that, uh, that it was hate speech coming down from the White House. How much, of, uh, how much, of, how much evidence do you have that, uh, well, how much, I guess my question is, how much time did uh, Camillo spend online uh, in this QAnon conspiracy? Uh, as far as computing how much time, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll conduct our own forensic evaluation of the computer, of his phones. Um, but I will repeat, nothing. All right, so stop right there. That is a big, that is big breaking, a breaking news kind of thing right there. So the lawyer for Anthony Camillo, I asked him, how much time did Camillo spend online surfing QAnon posts? And he said, we are going to do our own forensic evaluation of Camillo's phone and his computer to find that out. Right, so where was he? Where was he? Is he following the... The uh, QAnon hacks that we all uh, have grown to know and hate and love, and <laughs> you know who you guys are, right? who are promoting this this uh, conspiracy theory, this 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 fake bullshit, in my view, about QAnon, right? and you're promoting it. But but uh, but how much time did he spend online surfing this stuff, and? Who was he watching, right? So all the evidence is going to come out. If there is a trial, we will see that evidence, according to this um, this attorney. Now, is the attorney full of shit? Is the attorney just making a case 
to take the attention away from the Gambino hit, the making a case for an insanity plea? Who knows? It's not the point. The point is that, is there a casual connection between QAnon and the killer? Right? Is there a casual connection? Yes. Here it is. Right? Here's the casual connection. He's in court. Right? And he's got his hand up. Right? And this is what it says. Right? United we stand. The big Q in the middle. MAGA forever. Right? Patriots in charge. Right? Am I making it up? No. Here he is. Right? He's waving his hand. This is the casual connection between QAnon, the killer, and as I said in the last, you know, video, I have confirmed that there is no real connection. There's no confirmable connection that this kid right here, Anthony Camillo, had any connection to the Gambino crime family as a, as a hitman, as a, as a sanctioned killer or a disgruntled, you know, worker within the crime family said, I'm going to kill this guy. Like, there's no, there's no... There's no evidence that I could find from the inside poking around to actual people that would have information about this sort of thing. Right? The only thing that I could find out, not that, that there was any sanction, because, again, gangsters like to brag about that. A hit, a mob hit, is a power grab. And when the, when the power grab occurs, someone grabs power. And it doesn't seem to be from the inside they they're, they're kind of like what did, what what just happened most of the gang mobs don't, they don't know what the hell just happened who is this kid he's a psychopath right or is he or is he is he one of these guys is he a, a Q vigilante right is it is it even a thing now am i saying this to am i am i saying this to say that Q should be censored Q should be removed not at all no because because it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. It's like fantasy football, or it's it's um, you know sci-fi. Right? You, this is this is a public. This is allowed in our society to to have crime fantasy. Right? No doubt about it. If you're gonna if you're gonna ban QAnon, you have to ban you know every every episode of Columbo and every you know all the Sopranos and all the killing and the mob violence and such. You know, where men are kissing each other, right? by the way, you know, the guy's bashing Joe Biden for, for being putting his head on somebody else's, his forehead on someone else's forehead. But what about, what about the, the gangsters that kiss each other? The men, grown men, come here, get a fucking Anthony, you get a fucking kiss. Get this fucking guy like this, fucking grabbing his, grabbing his tits and his belly, Mwah, fucking guy's my friend, I fucking love this guy, right? right the, the gangsters do that all the time, man, right? Or, you know, you see these spiritual, spiritual circles where everybody holds hands. I fucking hate that shit, man. Don't hold my fucking hand. Don't kiss me on the face. Don't kiss me, man. I feel your fucking beard on my face. Don't kiss me. So, so, so anyway, so back to, to Q, right? Here's his hand, right? Holding up into the court. Here is the casual connection, right? Now, I just did that with, I just did this with a pen, right? I did this and it took me a minute or two to just copy what he did, right? Right? And and the other allegation is that that he couldn't have gotten a pen in jail. No, they give you a pen in jail. You can have a pen and paper in jail. Right? That's not, you know, that's not hard to get. Hey, can I borrow a pen? I want to write a letter to my mother. And they give you a pen. They give you a stamp. They give you a piece of paper, an envelope. Right? You can you can do whatever you want, right? In in that respect, you can do that. Right. So so here he is with his attorney. We're gonna go back to his attorney in a second. I know I cut it off. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that that the, the the attorney Robert Gottlieb that I spoke to said that there is going to be that they do have uh, they're going to subpoena or whatever they have the ability to get a hold of his computer to see how much time he spent chasing Q. Right? I was in Eltingville. I went down to his hometown. That's that's Frankie Kelly. That's the Godfather, right? That's the guy that he shot. Right? What is this? What what is this case about? You know, what is it? That's what we're trying to find out. So let's uh, let's just re do this again because this is pretty this is pretty interesting stuff. Threats is that still? I'm not going to discuss anything further about that. Mr. Gottlieb, how much uh, how much uh, influence do you think QAnon had? Uh, White House, you had mentioned the last time around that uh, that it was hate speech coming down from the White House. 
How much of uh, how much of, how much evidence do you have that? Uh, well, how much? I guess my question is, how much time did uh, Camillo spend online uh, in this QAnon conspiracy? Uh, as far as computing how much time, yeah. uh, we'll we'll conduct our own forensic evaluation of the computer, of his phones. Um, but I will repeat, nothing has changed. In fact, since the uh, last time we were in court, it's only been confirmed that uh, uh, the hate speech uh, found on multiple uh, right-wing conspiracy uh, websites uh, have uh, played a very significant uh, critical role. So that's that's very interesting. Hate speech. He's saying right-wing conspiracy sites promoting hate speech, right? That's basically, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he's saying. He didn't give any specifics. He didn't give any details. And the only, the, the, he's confirming that QAnon, I'm asking him directly, the QAnon conspiracy, and he's confirming that it is, that this means Q, right? There's no doubt about it, that this means QAnon, right? There's, that's off the table as well, right? from his own, from the lawyer's mouth. Is there a casual connection between the killer and QAnon? Yes. And here's the lawyer saying that, that um, exactly that, right? There is the casual connection. And that the right, oh, he also said about hate speech. Okay, hey, so hate speech is not illegal in this country, by the way. Uh, but, uh, but did it lead, did that speech lead someone to kill? I don't know. In understanding what happened in this case, uh, this is not some idle speculation. Uh, it's not... Uh, trying to set up some legal defense. We're just talking about the facts, the truth. And there's no doubt that uh, uh, this case reflects uh, the, the impact that words, hate words, hate speech can have on an individual, an individual who is vulnerable. Uh, and it goes far beyond Mr. Camello. So it's a serious issue. Uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, all the facts, the truth, uh, will be, uh, will come out. Just a little follow-up. Can you, would you, uh, do you think that QAnon, the QAnon conspiracy, the people behind it, should be held accountable? My Are they responsible? My concern right now is uh, uh, representing Mr. Camillo. He's the individual who's charged right now, and I'm going to do everything possible uh, to uh, to protect him legally. Uh, as far as other people being held accountable, that's for other authorities. Uh, but people should not turn their eyes from the reality of, of what happened here and why it happened. Uh, it's someone else. It's someone else's hands as to whether or not other individuals, other websites, uh, are ultimately. Uh, uh, held accountable or bear responsibility. So if there is a direct... So that that's pretty interesting stuff, right? Now, I, I followed up on that question because, not because I think that QAnon should be held responsible, but I want to know if he thinks that QAnon and the, the you know, the people that promote QAnon should be held responsible. And again, you got you got some angry mobsters out there right now, guys. Just if you haven't noticed, it's the Gambino crime family. You just, you just the kid whacked one of the, one of the lead you know, mobsters in the country, right? And, and uh, here, you know, is it, is Q, it doesn't seem to be, right, a mob hit, right? So now it's, it's QAnon versus the Gambino crime family in a sense, right? That's, I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to, I'm just sh trying to show, get to the truth of the matter, right? I'm not, I'm not, le I didn't lead his question, is what I'm trying to say. I didn't lead him to, to the QAnon phenomena, he talked about it. There's the evidence in the hand, right? And here he is confirming it. Right, let's see what else he says. When can you, I guess the, the confusion that remains, if you can shed any light on how how, how Mr. Cowley plays into this, because I know, yeah, the conspiracies talk about Democrats and high profile politicians. How does a, can you shed any light on that? How the, how the mob boss, you know? The, the answer is, uh, I could, but I'm not going to discuss that further today. So he can, that's an interesting question. The kid asked him, is there, what is the connection to the Gambino guy? What is the connection to Frankie Cali that he shot? 
And the lawyer won't say out, out in the open. You know why? Because there is no casual connection. There is nothing, right? As, as for, if, he, if there was, he would have said, he would have said the daughter, the niece, he would have said that, the, that uh, Callie was, that Camillo wanted to date Callie's niece and they had a falling out and he went there to apologize. He would have said something to, to that degree or he would have said it was a falling out in a, in a, in a business deal. There's no casual connection as confirmed, I don't know, in, in, the, in the words of his attorney, but also in poking around behind the scenes in the mob. What's his mental state right now? Is he receiving threats? Where he's being held? Is he being held in a separate location from other prisoners? I'm not going to discuss uh, where he's being held, how he's being held, except I do. Uh, I commend uh, the Department of Corrections. I commend NYPD and the FBI for taking the issue of safety very seriously. And everything that I have seen shows that uh, they have carried out their their duties, their commitment to do exactly that. Uh, beyond that, I'm not going to comment. Does he have a pre- can you talk about his previous criminal history? I'm not going to discuss any of that. How about his uh, his uh, drug addiction? Is he on medications inside of the uh, wherever he's being held by now? His his medical needs are being met. Being met. Yeah. All right. Is it opiate-related, uh, opioids? I'm not going to discuss that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. As far as I'm concerned, that confirms that there is opiates. <laughs> and I asked him the question, right, about his drug addiction, right? And he's saying that his medical needs are being met. That's usually a sign of detox. What you, If there's no medical need being met, then if there's no medical need, then there's no medical need being met. So you can draw a conclusion that he's in some sort of treatment as receiving some sort of medical treatment. Now, for opioids, it's probably he's probably on the methadone program. They probably stuck him on methadone at Rikers Island. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you much. Thank you much. We got we got a cop standing there. Look. <laughs> Surveillance. Right. We're being watched. Yeah. So so anyway, if you want to watch that, here's the address to that. Uh, that was my clip. I put it up. You can watch it in its entirety. Four minutes. I have the um, my comments afterwards. You can watch that here, Anthony Camillo. It's all in the playlist. This is my trip to Staten Island, Eltingville, where he uh, was. This is um, this is a the first statements that I, I go through the first statements that his attorney made uh, regarding the hate words and hate hate speech. But we've now pretty much you know confirmed that. Remember this. Pretty much confirmed now that uh, the lawyer has doubled down on the hate speech uh, defense. Right? You remember, you remember this. So is it? So is it? So QAnon is it? QAnon is he connected to state? Is he? Is he the right hand of the father, Trump? Is Pence deeply involved in a deep state coup? Right? To you know, is there a deep state coup designed to overthrow Trump and his presidency? And and derail the country and 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 prevent Hillary from being locked up. Uh, I don't know, but he has his his Pence. Remember this episode where you had the you had the uh, the guy right here, the army guy with his Q on his chest. Remember that shit. So you know. So again, what is Q? What is QAnon? What what is this phenomenon? Right? Uh, you guys are going to keep chasing it, man. So I'm going to keep talking about it, man. So, so anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that. Just a little, a little, uh, you know, bringing everybody up to speed on it. The QAnon killer. Um, I'm still convinced that there is a casual connection. This right here, my friend, is the evidence, right? That he he held it up. It was in his head, and in some way, this fairy tale drove him to kill. Right now, again, oxycotton combination of oxycodone and strung out on pot there is a casual connection and that it does need it needs to be explored uh i don't believe fully his lawyer at all that it's hate speech that drove him whatever hate speech is because you can't find it in its constitutionally protected speech but what is true is that you know it's like the catcher in the rye like that that drove mark david chapman to kill john lennon he sat on the 
he sat on the steps and he saw himself as the catcher in the rye saving children from falling off the edge of the cloud. Do you remember the do you remember that clip in the in the book? He talks about it. And uh, you know, so maybe this kid saw himself the same, right? Now should we ban catcher in the rye from the bookshelves? No, absolutely not. That's not what we're advocating here. That but what we are doing is is that when you when you glorify and fantasize it and don't talk about it, then it 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 um it gets bigger and and fluffier and like in New Zealand now that they're, they're shutting down you know you can't speak about what happened in the you know and with the religious people you can't talk about it you can't even speak about it and at least in this country so far we're still allowed to discuss uh, subjects like this you know again my stand is and always has been that QAnon is detrimental to the political discussion to the, the political discourse of moving the ball forward. The attention should be on policy, not this this fantasy world of you know of of uh, you know crime. It's it's um it's crime porn. You know it's it's political porn in a sense. So, Marcus Conti reporting.